Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Today I'm going to continue working on the third ballot by Chopin. Uh, last time we stopped at around measure 52, uh, that's the end of the introduction section. And then here comes the second theme. Um, in the previous video, I talked about how um, the, most, the two most important things uh, about this piece is one, the use of rubato, yeah, as I ex uh, uh, explained in the previous uh, episode. And the other one is to be able to connect a melody that has rests in between notes. Okay, so this is the perfect example. And, and we have things like this in all piano repertoire. Yeah, but this one is really typical. So we have So although there is a eighth note rest in between each melodic notes, then still we have to glue them together as one line. And I don't know if this is something uh, everyone plays, but when I was young, um, there was this kind of uh, a game uh, on the newspaper that I collect. Um, it gives you different dots, and, and if you don't connect the dots, it looks like just a mess, right? But then the, the dots are actually numbered. So if you number, uh, if you draw the line between dot number one and number two, and then go to the third one, go to the fourth one, and you see, oh, that's a, a elephant or a giraffe, whatever. It, it was always an animal. Um, so this is all uh, the same. If you connect the dots, then you see this. And what is this animal, actually? This is the opposite with, uh, with this. Right, this is really ingenious. <laughs> this is really genius of, of, of Chopin. It's the reverse of, of the opening theme. Of course, not exactly, okay? But I remember how amazed I was when I learned that the when I learned this is, is the reverse way of, 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 of the, uh, the Paganini theme. I thought, oh, Rahmanov is genius, but of course he is a genius, but um, many people before him have done it, yeah? Of course, including the uh, Brahms uh, Paganini variations, there was, uh, there was one uh, variation that is the reverse way. Um, so, so here we have to keep in mind that it is a melody we need to emphasize and we need to connect with ups and downs. But also, let's not forget, this section is a duet. Yeah, it's a duet between the soprano and the tenor. So, but, yeah. And of course, this tenor-wise, later on turn into something It's the reversed way, so it's uh, uh, the contrary motion. So it's really something definitely Chopin was intentionally putting there. Um, of course, the most challenging part well, when I was teaching this piece is to ask my students to not give a accent on this bass note. Yeah, and of course it's it's hard to control. Uh, not only uh, you have to really play it lighter, you have to travel. Yeah, so, so for the first one, it's a span of 11s. So a lot of times for, for uh, students with a uh, smaller hand, they have to travel quite fast and then they bump that note. What is my solution? Of course, um, I have pretty big hand. I I can't say that uh, oh uh, it's the same way for me to 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 play this. Um, 
as if I were having a, a smaller hand. But this is what uh, my approach is. You have to make sure the muscle remembers from this point, you're already exiting the, the key. So I'm lifting my elbow, I'm lifting my arm before I even touch this note so that you can't have a big sound yeah and this is I mean almost like you're 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 actually covering someone's mouth before they were going to yell so you make sure even if they try their best they can't produce a loud sound so Right? But of course you want this motion to be circulating so you don't stuck there. Yeah, anything that stops the momentum is wrong. So Yeah, so this no matter how far this is really two octaves, but still you approach it exactly the same way. Um, and this thing goes on and on until 73, where the tenor voice is having a parallel octave with the soprano melody. Uh, yeah, something serious is coming up. And what is it? You're no longer you're no longer having the descending fifths, but you're going up from major. 77 and this time it's not the soprano it's the alto so you know every voice has its turn yeah of this and then but the second time the left hand really also doubles uh, the right hand and also the second time left hand has a accent on each single notes and how do we make a difference um, the first time in measure of 81 82 um, you're still having this feeling in three I think left hand is is really doing <laughs> everything it can to pr provide that pulse. But then the second time, you're trying to chew on every single note. Yeah, this is something really sincerely or seriously you want to make sure you listen. Yeah, so every single one of them you have a stress on. And then this next part is going down, but again, we have the texture of the chorale. Bass, bass and soprano. Now you have a, a tenor. have two voices and then the same um, this transition between 114 115 until 116 that is a really a special moment yeah because you have this C major part yeah so bright so peaceful and then yeah? This is almost like a Star Wars movie music uh, theme. So you, you have a third relation from C major to A flat. Okay. But it's something that changes it to a warmer sound. And here, that's another place to really focus on the voicing. Left hand pop. 
like a marzuka it's almost a dance okay with right hand having this flushy running passages and left hand has a focus on the second beat so D flat, do, di, do. but here dum, dum, do, di, dum. rhythmically it's like that but then melodically do, do, di, the first note the, the shorter eighth note is actually having a melody and another thing is within the left hand there is a conversation between the bass and the top Top. This part is so <laughs> expressive, it's so sincere, Chopin Mark. Sostenuto, meaning the notes are long. But very peculiarly, the long notes, which we thought would be something like this, that, yeah, but we have a section like that in the third blood, but later. But here, everything is is going down, and Chopin marked diminuendo. Yeah, this is the most uh, unusual climax that you only see the mini endos, yeah, uh, within each phrasing. So it's really m mimicking a sigh, but a meaningful, a expressive, emotional one. So it's yeah. So this use of rubato is necessary. So instead of instead of everything, even I would really prolong. The, sec the first one. But of course, you don't want every single time it to be exactly the same treatment. You want it first time to da di da da, second time less so da di da da, more flowy. So, an another thing I want to share is how my Professor Kalikstein, uh, Mr. Kalikstein always said, you have to react to what you just did yeah, on the stage. So not everything is so well planned. Uh, you have to, if the first time you didn't do it as much, yeah, if the first time you did, which is totally fine, then the second time you do more. Yeah, you can't just say, oh, oops, the first time I didn't do as much, but the second time, I used to play it with more floating, then I still need to play them exactly in time. Uh, no, you can always adjust. Okay, so be a little spontaneous on the stage. Um, next time we will continue uh, with major 157, and I hope I will finish the whole piece uh, next episode. As I mentioned, the third one and then the second, uh, ballads are relatively speaking easier compared to number one and number four. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you next week. <laughs>